So our question reads, the mean weight of 100 women is 143 pounds with a standard deviation of 29 pounds. What weights separate the middle 60% of weights for these 100 women if their weight is normally distributed? So I like to start off by writing down all the information I'm given. And it starts with these 100 women. So that means N is 100, the mean is 143, the standard deviation is 29, where I'm using mu and sigma for mean and standard deviation symbols. Okay, now we don't really need the fact that it's 100 women, but there are problems later where you'll need that, so it's always a good idea to count for it. On this one, because it just asks for the weight of these 100 women, and it's not saying a sample of these 100 women or 100 women are being sampled, then we don't really actually need to worry about it. Okay, this one asks for the weights. What weights are separating that? So remember, that means I'm finding a data value. So I'm working with the table backwards since it's not probability or area, and I have to use the conversion formula. Also, another twist on this problem, it asked for the middle 60%, and we haven't seen that one in a while, so we have to remember how to find middle z-scores. I start by drawing my bell-shaped curve centered over my mean of 143, just to give me some perspective. And I want the middle 60%, right? So dead center in the middle. That means a value below 143 and a value above 143, which in terms of z-scores will be a negative and a positive z-score. And ultimately, these are the things that I want, those z-scores so I can get the x's. But this helps me with my answer. One number has got to be below 143, one number has to be above 143, and I need two answers. So to find the z-score I want, I took that middle 60% and realized it just means 30 to the left of the middle and 30 to the right of the middle. Remember, our table only finds area to the left, so starting from the left corner and shading over. So I need to figure out how to do that. So I took the 60 and split it to the left and right half of the curve. But the other piece I know is that this right half of the curve is 50% of the total curve. All the area totals 100%, so the left half alone is 50%. And we just said that on the right side of this, the left side of the curve, the right end of this 50%, we know that that 30% is kind of sandwiched down there. That means I've got to have 20% to the left of it. If two numbers add to 50 and one of the numbers is 30, then the remaining number has to be 20. Remember, we're not doing the complement. We're not doing minus one because we're not doing the whole curve. We're only doing the left half of the curve. This means I need to look up 20% in the middle of the table, right? It ends where the 30% starts, so they're sharing the same wall, the same z-score. So step one, I want to look up 2,000, because that's 20%, in the middle of the z-table to find the negative z-score, which starts the middle 60%. So first thing I need to do is get this negative z-score, and I'll do it by looking up the point 2,000. And remember, I know it's a negative, so I know which table to start with, the negative z-table, but I keep bouncing around, too big, too small, this number is too small, too small, too small, what's going on? Oh, here we go. In row negative 0.8, I find 2005 and 1977. The 2000 would have been sandwiched between them, so I know I'm at the right spot. I find how far away the two numbers I got were. One is 5 away, one is 23 away. I mean, one's above and below, but I'm not worrying about that. So since 5 away is closer, I'm going to use the z-score that came from the negative 0.8 with a 4 on the end. Now, I need to look up my next z-score, and if you understand the symmetry of the table, right, if we just fold it down the middle, the left half is a mirror image, other than positive versus negative, I actually know my next z-score will be positive 0.84, but if you're not there yet, let's go through the process. I need to look up the 0.5, which got me to the middle, and then I need to look up Oops, sorry. I need to look up the point 30 that got me to the next point, the point 0.8. This will give me the positive z-score, 
which ends at the middle 60%. So over here, this wall has a z-score that is 50% to the middle and 30% further, which is at 0.8. Again, I bounce all around the positive table, too big, too big, too big, too small, too small, too small, wait, too big, too big, too small, and all of a sudden I find in row positive 0.8, 79.95, which is too small, and 80.23, which is too big. My 8,000 would be between those. Look at the distances. And again, five away is closer, so now I'm using the positive 0.84. Had I not known symmetry, I just used the table twice. No big deal. Step three is I want to plug both of those scores, but one at a time, obviously, into the data conversion formula of x equals mu plus z sigma, right? We just took the z-score formula, solved for x, and plugged in what we have. So I'm going to get a lower cutoff and an upper cutoff. So I start by using the negative z-score and the mean and standard deviation, which I'm given. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the positive z-score for the mean and standard deviation, which I'm given, and do my math. So usually if it was a test question or a homework, there you'd be told the answer is a whole number, one place after the decimal, two place after, whatever the case is. In this case, I went for whole numbers. The first one is going to round up because of the 0.6 after the decimal, but the next one will stay as is because of the 0.3 after the decimal. And so my final answer is the weight separating the middle 60% is between 119 pounds and 167 pounds.